Welcome to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today we're going to talk about where does our value lie? If we base our worth on anything else than the price paid for us on the cross, we are deceived. If we base our worth on our talents or our youth or the amount of money that's in the bank, we are in danger of emotional, physical, and spiritual burnout. We are setting ourselves up for continual self-doubt and comparison. I'm not sure if you've got this other places in the world, but I have a feeling you do. In Canada, we have a book that the people who are in the market to buy or sell used cars look at, and it's called the Blue Book. Now, the Blue Book lists what a used car is worth in the general market. And it's pretty clear as soon as a new car leaves a car lot, its value plummets. In contrast, the Bible states that no life circumstance, sin, weakness, or advancement in age will cause our net worth to depreciate in the eternal scheme of things. Regardless of the sticker price that the world might place upon us at any time in our lives, we will never lose our true worth. We will always be of an infinite worth. The price paid for us, after all, determines our value. God's unwavering love ensures we will never devalue in his eyes. Over the last couple of years, I joined many of my friends who were going through the same thing. We were going through the painful journey as we watched our elderly parents become frail in body and in mind. The calloused and the jaded might consider an elderly person or a disabled person lying listlessly in a hospital bed to be of little worth because they're not contributing anything to society. Perhaps that person lying in that hospital bed feels the same way about themselves. If only they could grasp this incredible truth. God actually puts great value on the frailest of containers because of their potential to hold the greatest treasure. The cross gave us an eternal worth that will never change. In times of plenty, in times of want, in times of renown, and in times of undistinguished day after day living. Never forget this truth. I'm going to be reading a quote by A.W. Tozer. Just a little bit of a caveat. Tozer wrote this in a time where everybody understood that in this quote, he was talking about all genders. It wasn't gender specific. When the Lord lays his hand upon a man, that man ceases at once to be ordinary. He immediately becomes extraordinary and his life takes on cosmic significance. The angels of heaven take notice of him and go forth to become his ministers. Though the man had before been only one of the faceless multitude, an invisible dust grain blown across endless wastes, now he gets a face and a name and a place in the eternal scheme of meaningful things. Christ knows his own sheep by name. There are no unknown Christians in God's eyes. The faceless man has a face. The nameless man, a name. When Jesus picks him out of the multitude and calls him to himself. I agree with Tozer up to a point. I believe that even before we surrender our lives to Christ, Christ pays the same attention to us all. But when we surrender our lives to Christ, how much more 
can we play a significant role in the cosmic scheme of things, as Tozer said. You are a person of great worth in God's eyes, and not just to God, but to all of his people. A true Christian is somebody who looks into the eyes of those who would dismiss us having little or no consequence in the world. And as they gaze into that person's eyes, they see that spark of creation and they see why God loves that person so much.